Oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Seed Story Cup number three. And now with me joining, as the chat requested, it is the lovely Stripe Crow. Hey, hi guys. Good hey, to guys. have you here, man. Yeah, I'm good. And as we already said, we are going to have the winner's match of the Group B, of Group Stage number two here, and it's going to be Ignite against Lothar. Yeah, I, I casted Lothar's first game, so I got to see his decks. I was kind of rooting for him. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've, I've kind of met Lothar a lot, so... He's cool. Uh, hopefully, we'll get to see some nice matches. I'm not sure what Ignite is playing yet. Definitely. Ignite is playing. In his lineup, he has Paladin, Priest, Warrior, and Mage, though the Priest got banned again. Ah, okay. Uh, we saw that already in, in the first match between him and Nimsh. But as I am informed, the games uh, are about to start. We will jump into the first one. Cool. Spectate it. And there we go, let's see. Lothar brought a Druid, Hunter, Mage and Warlock. The Warlock was banned and we start out with a Mage Mirror match. But I know Ignite is playing a Freeze Mage here. Okay, so this is actually not, not a Mirror. Mech Mage against Freeze Mage. Yeah. I wonder, Lothar should know as well that Ignite's a Freeze Mage. I mean, these, these guys are all doing the research, I'm sure, uh, about their opponents. So he shouldn't be caught off guard. I wonder exactly. if that means that he's going to think about keeping Lothar because it's really good <laughs> against... Mage. Totally agreed. I would also just replace the pilotage. Rather, he gets a fireball. He has a s nice start with Mech Warper already in hand. Snow Tugger does not get too much value in this matchup, but still a nice two drop. And also a Mad Scientist here. It's a nice curve. You can just coin the Mad Scientist out if you want to, and then go Mech Warper, Snow Chugger on turn. Uh, oh, it's another turn too. So yeah, I mean I'm not like sure that. because uh, most Mech Mages are. But running two mirror entities, I don't know if it matters that much to coin out Mad Scientist, because you, you're not you're not really trying to get a quick mirror entity against Freeze Mage. Mm. Oftentimes it's a little bit weird as well, where they kill your Mad Scientist and play Doomsayer. So sometimes people just don't play this card, or like wait for wait for when they really need another minion. I can see just you know something else, you know, like just yeah. another minion. It's probably fine. Ignite, on the other hand, uh, also does not have any card draw in his hand but for now. He just has a Frostbolt, uh, the Ice Lands, Ice Block already lining up, but nothing for him to, to early draw some cards. No Acolyte of Pain, no Arcane Intellect. Oh, I can't, okay. Yeah, I mean, just can't do much here. Uh, probably, again, if you're going to go for the... Go for the plan where you don't play Mad Scientist. He's probably going to stick to his plan. Um, he doesn't. I mean, Mech Warper doesn't do much here, but it's just going to be another mech. Just in case one dies, he'll have another one for Tinker Town. Exactly. Ignite draws his Flame Strike. We'll go for the three mana Ice Block here. Yeah, this is like the kind of hand you don't want to Strange Damage. Usually, as Phrase Damage early, you want to use these turns with a card draw. Even minions like Mad Scientist, Loot Horror, all, all better. I you, you, the ideal turn three is not something like developing Ice Block or or even Ice Barrier. It's much better to play like Arcane Intellect or Acolyte of Pain, things like that. Exactly. You, you need a certain hand size for Freeze Mage to get going, and that's usually what you want to do early. So it's unfortunate for Ignite, but he doesn't, he doesn't have anything else. Probably just going to develop Ice Block. What to do? What to do? Yeah, and now, well, he, maybe he's thinking about uh, the Doomsayer. We have seen him play the Doomsayer early on in his last game. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's definitely something. Uh, sometimes, a lot of times, uh, you do want to save your Doomsayer for the Mirror Entity, but sometimes, you know, this is a lot of pressure. It's going to snowball out of control very soon. Uh, it it kind of depends. Like, he also does not have a Frost Nova either, so, you know, you, a lot of times you want to combo Doomsayer with that as well. He does size, he just... He goes for the Frostbolt, takes out the Mac Warper to deny some more value out of that. We see the Tinker Town Technician coming down. So, some more pressure here by Lothar. Finally, Ignite at least draws some, some card draw if he wants to go for that now. And I, I don't really see a reason why, why not to draw cards here. Yeah, I mean, he has to. Doomsayer at this point, there's already six powers. Yeah. So you can't play Doomsayer. The only other even alternative to even think about here is Ice Block, but... It doesn't really make that much sense because you can you want to you want to have a big hand size early so you have more options and then ice block later. You, ice blocks like you you want to set up eventually, but it's much better to have more options. So. Now the cockmaster is actually pretty nice. We could see that come down with the 
second tier tower technician. If so you this want is to. a huge thing because Ignite did not draw 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 Frost Nova, so he cannot Frost Nova Doomsday here. So if Lothar just goes for Tinker Town and Cogmaster, and Ignite doesn't get the Frost Nova. If you just play a up after, you might even just win the game because that locks out everything. And then exactly. that's, that's like lethal, I think. So, yeah, I mean, this next turn for Ignite is going to be super important. I mean, he might de de develop the Ice Barrier Ice Block, which will maybe, he probably won't die. But after the Lothab, I can see it being very, very bad after. Yeah, I totally agree to that. But now uh, you could play maybe Ice Block and your own Mad Scientist to maybe fish out the... Uh, ice Barrier I meant, and fish out the Ice Block out of your deck with your Mad Scientist. That seems like the best play. It's still gonna be very hard uh, for Ignite though here. It's because this board is, what, 13 damage already? You get 13 it's twice. It's so scary. And Lothar, that's a no-brainer for him. He goes for for the Loth up here. On turn 5 and that's so much pressure. Okay. Yeah, he, I mean, I think he needs to think about whether to um, proc the Mad Scientist. I kind of like that, it's pretty smart. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to trade, but if he... Like, if you proc the Ice Bear and then proc the Mad Scientist, sometimes you can get another Ice Block. I mean, Ice Barrier instead yeah. of Block, and you, you that's the worst one here. Because even with the 8 extra health, it doesn't matter sometimes. That's so much damage anyway, so... Exactly, but also I don't really see, even if the Ice Block now comes down, uh, the Freeze Mage really does have a tough time here. Because with the Fireball also lining up in Lothar's hand, he can... If we see the Mad Scientist now trade into the Snow Chugger, that's what I expect, because you take the two damage away from the Cockmaster. Yeah, what if uh, he gets another barrier instead of a block? It's a bad chance. Oh, yeah. Because then, he, is he just dead? Because No, that's that's not lethal. Well, he trades away the Cockmaster. He wants to be safe, and he gets uh -huh. the Ice Block. So he's yeah. totally safe next turn. Actually, that's a nice draw, Emperor Thoris in here, because he can't really do anything, and he draw that from the top of his deck on turn 6. Yeah, yeah, I gave him something to do. Uh, I mean, it's big, but I'm not sure if it's going to matter that much. If Lothar can just get Ignite to, like, one life here... Yeah, then sure. every turn after, it doesn't matter if you're freezing, you just ping as well, so... It looks like, obviously, he can easily kill... He can kill Ignite. I think what you can do is just get him to one with the ping, and then attack with Snow Chugger, and then just Fireball the Emperor. You don't need the Fireball once you get the other person to one. I mean, sometimes you'll need it after Alex draws with the heal, but that's kind of far away, and... It, I think it doesn't matter enough. Whoa. What to do? Okay, he goes for oh, that. Oh, that makes sense. Wow, yeah, Time Rewinder on Loth, uh, denying some more spells, so now he even prevents... Oh no, because of the decreasing costs by Emperor Thoris, and you can still play the Ice Block on turn 7, but it's it costs a whole nother turn for Ignite, so it sets him further behind. And is there even another way to play that out? Yeah, Lothar is going for the play where he's pressuring even like the other Ice Block. With this, I, I don't know if it exactly worked out because Ice Block can still be played, but I guess that would depend on whether he, whether Ignite had the Ice Block when you played the Emperor. But still, it never feels good to play Ice Block for seven here. Yeah. Even if you play Ice Block for seven, they're still gonna and lose your block again. And, there's no know. game plan here for for no. Ignite to follow that up because you're on turn eight. After that, no Ice Blocks left. Yeah, it was really the let them in turn on turn five, combined with ignites a little bit like bad opening hand that kind of sealed this game. Uh, yeah, I don't see how ignite can win this game, but. And there he goes. That's the only way he can survive next turn. Trades in with his emperor Thorson. Anoitron, but it doesn't really matter. It looks I mean, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a golden Anoitron, so yeah. Lothar's adding some style to his play. I mean, there's some stuff to think about. Like, it's always cool to think about these situations a little bit, but ultimately it's hard It's hard to come up with something very good because everything you do just looks so good. Yeah. I think Lothar's thinking about either 
to ping and ignite to one here before proccing the block because then it's easier to proc again, but then you can't ping the 5 1, right? So it's different things. I think this is actually a little bit better just to ping his face to give him that one and then just trade the chugger for it or something. Yeah, I you... don't I don't know why it would matter. It just seems like more right to me. I don't know. Yeah, I totally know what you mean here. And then we see the ice block being proc once more. There's no chugger trades into the Emperor Tharsan. So it's actually possible from Lothar's perspective that Ignite has Alex Strasser to heal back up to 15 because of the Emperor, but we know that Ignite yeah. doesn't, so it's not even possible. And even then, you could just kind of flood the board with more than 15 power here. Like, there's 13 here plus Fireball, so even if Alex, he still wins, so... Exactly. And Ignite draws another Fireball, and now let's see. He, he draws another two cards, but... As we know, both ice blocks are already gone. He draws into. Oh. <laughs> that doesn't even matter. Yeah. Oh, and um, he, he actually hid the heal, but didn't play it. Actually, I don't. He would have still been dead. I wonder if he was doing it on purpose to hide. Yeah, the, he did hit it, but in the end, it didn't matter. So uh, Lothar goes up 1-0 here, winning with his mech mage against the freeze mage by ignite. Uh, still well played, I would say. Lothar did take his time, did think about his moves here, and now that leaves Lothar just left with the Hunter and the Druid. Yeah, two strong classes to win. Both Hunter and Druid seem seem generally like they're very easy classes to take a game with. You know, they, I think they're maybe even the classes that are performing the best so far in this tournament. I know Hunter's Hunter's baiting out a lot of bands so far, so it's it's kind of interesting to see it unbanned for this. Yeah, exactly. And the Ignite has Paladin, Warrior, and Mage once more in his lineup. Uh, so still the Freeze Mage available. It's doing okay. Well, we have seen uh, the the Antique Healbot in the Freeze Mage, so that's an interesting choice. So I guess also the matchup against the Face Hunter is not so bad as it sometimes is. Yeah, I actually saw a, fr a Freeze Mage win so far once, so that was actually interesting. So if you were Ignite here... What class would you pick against Lothar now? Oh, it doesn't matter. Conquest is completely random. You yeah, I heard. Uh, you you are rolling <laughs> dices. Yeah, I heard no. that by, it, it by Actually, Eco. people have done the math on this, uh, like mathematically, and there's no there's no difference. Like, you can... At, if you only care about winning the series, like, you know, three wins instead of looking good, like, if you think that 3-1 and 3-2 and 3-0 is the same, you know, yeah. only care about winning and losing, there's no difference at all uh, for for any of these but Even there's some psychology involved because people sometimes get nervous and if yeah. you maybe hit a bad matchup for them and make them nervous maybe also take that yeah into yeah, the remainder you, you, of the you match. can never hit a bad ma oh, so you want to give them a bad matchup earlier i guess but for the most part that's something that i mean if you feel pretty confident about your play you just want to like play the best hearthstone and uh you know, just don't worry about that stuff. You can easily just you know roll roll a dice or something. It, it actually it actually doesn't matter from like a from like a real perspective. You know, you can because you can never actually line any matchup up because you never know what they're gonna choose. You know. Yeah, but sometimes so, you you can expect that. But anyway, but no, but and yeah, why would you expect it if it's random? So we are going into the second game of the series, and it's gonna be Lothar on the Hunter against the Warrior here by Ignite. Yeah, good matchup for Ignite, definitely. This is kind of why he didn't ban Hunter. He has the Warrior. Paladin, I wouldn't assume, is very good, and Mage is probably not good even with the heal buff, but yeah, this is perfect. Most Warriors are going to be good against Face Hunter. Lothar, uh, last time he played Hunter, he never got one drops. So it's kind of depressing to see, but yeah. uh, it's, it, he did pick up the one drop, although his hand's still bad. <laughs> so. Maybe he can top deck another two drop, a mad scientist or a knife juggler on turn two. That might make it a bit better. We see Ignite going out oh, with wow. the Armorsmith early on. That, that's the hardest opening here, especially when you want a hero power here or something. It's, it just feels really bad because it, you don't even want to attack, kind of. Uh, yeah, so this is not looking good already for for Lothar. Exactly, now in turn 2, Ignite will probably just use his hero ability. There's not really much for him to do. Yeah. At least, uh, at least he does. At least he doesn't have another armor smith or something. <laughs> yeah, that's that's something running in Lothar's favor here. Yeah. Well, that card came a little bit too late. It'd be perfect on turn two. I'm not sure. It almost seems like reasonable to play it on turn three. It's still not great um, because the bow, the bow isn't great either. Like, 
I don't know. I mean, it seems like the correct play is probably just bow face, but it doesn't seem that good either. Yeah, I agree to the creeper. Maybe you can, if you want to, trade mm -hmm. the armor smith away then with the eagle horn bow. You could also go for... No, that's too slow if you go for bow this turn and set up the trade. Haunted creeper next turn. So I, I also feel like Lothar has to go for the haunted creeper here. I think he might even be thinking of Arcane Golem face, or, or, or even Arcane Golem Darmasith, because it lines up pretty good. It, it really feels bad to give yeah, them extra mana. Yeah, because you're giving the Warrior two. another so this mana is like crystal. a turn two one, which is like a, kind of like a wall growth on them, right? But I can see it being right, and honestly, I think it's probably the best play. Oh, there's a second Armorsmith, actually, So, but still, we might see Acolyte of Pain come down with the Execute on that Arcane Golem. Mm -hmm. and, and the third, I mean, and Ignite now has the extra wall growth mana, so it's, it is looking really good for him. It's always nice to have extra mana because every time you have two extra mana, you can hero power. Uh, you can also like develop your your shield mains faster. So Lothar now could think uh, could think about uh, Glaive Zuka buffing his warg and trade that in, or just use the Eagle Horn Bow here. I yeah. Think with Glaive Zuka, is you can play a Haunted Creeper or use your hero ability if you want to. This is all kind of weird because um, face hunter almost almost in every matchup you just want to go face, but against warrior because their minions are really scary to leave up like acolyte and armorsmith. A lot of times they're kind of really tempted to over trade, and it makes it really hard because no. I mean he is not he is just leaving this one up, but again like the armorsmith is kind of even scarier to leave up with the with the whole armor thing, especially you leave up an armorsmith and drop sludge belter where you know that can go go really bad for you so. Exactly. This time Lothar did go for the swing to the face. Uh, probably now this turn Ignite. Well, he he could think about playing Armorsmith armor up. Also, Shield Slam a possibility. Uh, Using it right now and that Warden. Are there any other targets you really want to hit? I don't really think so. It's very rare, yeah. Face 100, everything is just one toughness. Yeah. Sometimes two. The, the you like to hit those knife jugglers, though, yeah. but we haven't seen them yet, and that's... An indication that they are not here. Yeah, weird, weird hand for Lothar, um, because he didn't get to develop his his uh, like slow minions early. Developing them late feels always a little bit weird. And then because the warrior has these two minions, Armas with Knacklight, it's it's kind of hard to get anything going. Like these minions can snowball together. Uh, really bad for him, so... Yeah, and on turn 5, the, the warrior is still pretty healthy here on 20 HP. Now, Lothar just has to play like this, because he does have a lot of a lot of traps. And he can just try to go for the explosive and snake trap with the bow charge. He can't really play Creeper, because it's actually kind of like a negative thing. It gives, yeah. it gives too much armor in cards, so it doesn't have too much of a choice. Even explosive doesn't look too great here, because you give a lot of armor with, with the armorsmith, so... It's a tough turn. I mean, there are more. There's a decent amount of unleashed, unleashed targets. It's it's kind of hard to use unleash though because after you go face or anything like that, they can you know, trade. the funny thing uh, Ignite told me yesterday. Uh, he was on stream with me and he said, uh, "I just realized in ninety percent, in ninety nine percent of the cases, as a face hunter, if you go face." It's good. <laughs> I really like that sentence. And he's just sticking. Uh, Lothar is just sticking to that here because he's just going to the face now. Oh, whirlwind pickup. That's huge. With all these minions with the whirlwind. Yeah, that's crazy here. Yeah. And he runs into the snake trip, so even more value out of that. And double swing into the haunted creeper. Wow. It, it, I would say from this point on, because of the wall, when Dead really closes it out. Oh yeah, he can drop another minion first before the wall. Yeah, to, you could to get the other one extra armor. I would drop it or another minion first. So it's either just or so shield great. Minion. Yeah. I don't. I, you you care about the one life more on your on yourself than the one life on the minion. I think. Exactly. So, although I don't really know if it matters. The question either, just right? is well. He goes for well. But now the question for me was: Do you go shield maiden or sludge belcher first? He decides to do the wall with just on his minions. Could even, yeah, then just belcher up here. I do like the belcher more. He doesn't need the armor. <laughs> and <so>. Lothar <laughs> sees that this game is over and he concedes instantly. So that's the equalizer here. Ignite wins with his warrior. And now it's a one-one series. We are looking at.
Yeah, a lot closer series. I kind of feel like um. I kind of feel that Lothar's these last two decks. He does have the edge though. Um, I think the biggest thing is even though the hunter got matched up to the warrior and it lost pretty badly because it's a huge counter class. I feel like Ignite's last two decks against Hunter are going to be pretty bad, the Paladin and Freeze Mage. So, you know, I feel like it's going to be easy for Lothar to pick up a win with his Hunter. And Druid is, doesn't seem bad against either one. Actually, either. in the last match, Ignite was going up against Nimsh, also mm -hmm. playing Face Hunter, and his Paladin has the uh, has the Zombie Chow, has the the Cog Hammer as well. Mm -hmm. So he did have a nice matchup against that. So it depends because a lot of times when you add in the, that kind of stuff, you you actually take out the antique heal bot. So it's like a compromise. Um, I'm not sure. I guess I'll have to see it. I've never seen a paladin that's too great against hunter though. Yeah. Because usually, like if you cut on one end, you 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 cut stuff from the other end. You know, like you add in zombie child call camera, so you're more aggressive. But then you cut the heal bot. So you know what I mean? It's like it's all it's all like a compromise. And I I generally think they're not too great against face hunter no matter what but nice hand though <laughs> well growth always the always the best yeah and we do now see the freeze mage going up against lothar's druid here white growth lothar already ready inner right uh, you could just stick to that i i agree that's good enough you can coin out well growth and real lothar or something like that you know you're probably not locking out anything early on with lothar but it's a pretty oh he doesn't have a coin but anyways it's a pretty like, you just want a minion if you have well growth. Like, a minion does a lot of damage. So, I, w I would just think it's okay. Wow, and he even draws that pile of the Treader. So, go for wild growth now, then play the pile of the Treader. You want to think about this, because say you, say you, um, well growth Shredder here, and then sure, yeah, so it's, it lines up perfectly. You basically want to think about the mana cost, right? Because if you're not gaining any extra turn with the well growth here, you might as well just innervate out the shredder here and then wall growth on turn three if it doesn't like matter you know but it does yeah. line up perfectly yeah because on turn five you can innervate out that ancient of lore yeah, exactly. if you want to and i really like that refilling your hand you gain so much momentum then yeah. uh next up is gonna come another is gonna come six mana for you so possibly you have another nice play lothar goes for the wild growth here ignite places mad scientist something else he did not get in the last game he played his freeze mage and Ignite does have uh, kind of like a, a good opening here. It's just Lither also has a good one because you do have your two drop and your three drop Acolyte. Uh, it's kind of weird here because you you might not even want to drop your Acolyte because you kind of want to ping the ping the Shredder. Yeah, sure. We also see two ice blocks uh, lining up in his uh, two ice barriers lining up in Ignite's hand. Uh, that's not really what you want to draw in the early game, but. At least you will fish an ice block for sure, so you can count on that. I think Ignite's thinking about whether he wants to uh, go face and drop Acolyte or to ping. And a lot of it depends on the odds, because if you go face and drop Acolyte and the other person just drops a taunt like Belcher or drew the call, you kind of get punished. Because then you can't really trade. Oh, he even goes for the Frostbolt here. Hopefully something comes out that he can trade into. <laughs> oh, that's perfect for him. The, the Vitality is absolutely useless here. That's actually interesting. Just use the frostbolt and try and even save your mad scientist. And here we go. The nice turn five coming up for Lothar here. He has several options. I don't expect him to go for Lothar because it's such a crucial card in that matchup. You could think about the sludge Belcher, but still I really fancy the Ancient of Lore here. Yeah, I actually agree. Um, the the totem here is not very important to protect, right? Because if you were already getting burned out, this totem would be, would be really good. But since you're already at 30 and they usually wait for Alex to burn you, by the this totem's going to be useless because by the time they start burning you, it's going to die to AoE anyways, like Flame Strike or Blizzard. So this totem is not going to heal him when he really needs the healing later on in the game. So it's kind of pointless to try to keep it alive with Sludge Belcher here. And, and um, Ancient Lord does more damage, so... Exactly, and he did draw into a big game hunter in the shade of Nyx Ramas. Um, that's that's okay, I guess. You have the six drop already in hand, Sylvanas, if you want to drop it on, on turn six. Yeah, sometimes it's risky because it can fireball plus Doomsayer and clear your whole board. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, it, I don't think you want too many minions. I mean, you want enough to, like, 
keep the pressure up, but then the best things to draw are like combo and basically, I guess combo and low dev, those are the big things. He does have low dev, he doesn't have combo yet. I think Lothar is definitely looking for combo though. Or also, if they if you run rag, that's something that's really big impact. What to do? What to do? Whose turn is right now, uh, Mage? Yeah, he's roping. <laughs> I think I'm fireballing the five five <laughs> <laughs> or something. I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. Here wow. It comes. You know, the weird thing is in this matchup, sometimes, because Ignite, we've seen him use a Frostbolt and a Fireball, sometimes what happens in this matchup is Druid can beat the Mage in Fatigue. Like, sometimes you never kill them, yeah. but then they'll never kill you either if they use too much of their removal on your minions, and you'll just win because, you know, they just fatigue out. Uh, you just, event yeah, they don't have enough burn to kill you. It's possible. I mean, now with, like, Archmage and, um,. There's Power Blasts, and then there, especially if you can get Emperor Thoros on with the Ice Lances and the Archmage, it might it might just be too much damage. So I don't, I'm not sure. It's possible though. Yeah. So this turn for Lothar, um, we could see, well, still Sylvanas. Serva uh, we have seen one Fireball already. Uh, yeah, I kind of like it because I think Sylvanas is like a liability a lot of times. But if you have Sylvanas as your only minion here, it's not really a liability for the Doomsayer, right? Because it doesn't make sense to fireball the Savannahs to steal the Doomsayer, if that's the only minion, so... Yeah. I think it's it's I think it's actually better to drop Savannahs alo also, alone, you know? You could also think about the Shredder with the hero ability, but Lothar goes for the Savannahs, yeah. I really like that. Ignite draws into Blizzard, though. And now, turn 5 is a nice turn for Acolyte of Pain uh, with your hero ability with the ping. Uh, yeah. That's exactly what he goes for. Yeah, since it's like so also liability, I, I really like dropping a zillion threat here. It's it's a way to get value. Like it's not really getting value from Savon. You're, you're not getting a death draw value, but you're just kinda of utilizing it as a six mana five five, which is better than it normally is in this matchup. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, we also was were informed that Nimsh just well won, won his series three zero, so very quick. <laughs> we are just here very in the third sick, game yeah. and Nimsh yeah. is already done. Yeah, whoa, whoa. he might he went full leper Nimsh mode. Yeah. Eight so. leper every game. <laughs> Congratulations to your teammate Strife Crow. Yeah, congrats to Nimsh. Who who did he play? Um he played against it's on your computer, you can look it up. Against powder. powder. Really yes. Cool. Yeah, so uh, congrats. And that means that, unfortunately, Powder is out. Of the Powder is out, and Ninja is still going up against the loser of this match here in the decider match of Group B. Yep. So whoever wins this game, either Ignite or Lothar, is going to advance uh, into, the, into the bracket, into the round of eight, and wh whoever loses has to face Nimsh once again. Yeah, kind of a hard turn here. Um, all, the decision is maybe Belcher and Hero Power or Shade and Shredder. Because you know that there's maybe a 7 mana here with the coin fun strike. And there's also Blizzard. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure what's better. It seemed pretty close to me, so. I actually think maybe the other one is better, but I'm not sure. There's a chance that the Sludge Belcher can feed multiple cards into Acolyte of Pain. But it's hard for that to happen because uh, there would need to be something like another fireball. Or, but that's, you know, they don't want to generally use that many fireballs. So. Yeah. Yeah, this turn for Ignite. Um, how threatening is Lothar's board? That's the question here. Do you already want to do something against that? Or do you still want to use the card draw? Do you still want to draw a card by that Acolyte of Pain? I think he definitely wants to draw still. He doesn't have what he needs to win yet. And he can start... I would think about... Like, at this point, you're not going to get any more cre creature damage in. So, oh, wow, he's just going for the removal. I would think maybe just to drop Ice Barrier and clean your Acolyte or something and just give up the board, let yeah. him build up, and then start AOVing or something like that. He's still f actually just fighting for board control, though. I also fancied the play you were describing, but Ignite is really... Well using his fireballs and frost balls to trade away minions, drawing into Doomsayer now. So that's, that's, that's an important role, especially with no keeper here. You can, you can combo that with Blizzard. There's actually a Sylvanas, if you can kill Sylvanas, you can actually force them to steal 
Doomsayer. That only matters if there's other minions, you know, like a big board to Doomsayer down. If it's a monster only minion, that doesn't matter, so. Yeah, Lothar has eight mana available now in this turn. Uh, could definitely go for a shade, but though, as you already pointed out, now on turn six, turn seven, you have to think about blizzards, you have to think about flame strikes, so the shade of next Ramos might be taken out easily. Yeah, I, I can see um, the right move here being just swiping the board and dropping Shredder because swiping this matchup, it's not exactly very important. There's not really, really a lot of minions to swipe generally. Like this is probably almost the most powerful board that Ignite will get. You know, from here on, it's mostly going to be freeze and burn. Then they're going to generally give up board control eventually. One thing, one use that swipe does have is to maybe try to kill Archmage, but yeah, it doesn't actually kill it. Just yeah. it helps with it, maybe. I don't know. And it adds some burst to your late game. You can maybe bring down the mage a bit easier if you have a swipe. You can also use it with Force of Nature for 10 damage coming in. Yeah. But I also agree. A swipe Paladin Shredder seems like a nice play here. Because it stops the flame strike. Because the, there's only seven mana, maybe eight with the coin. So you still can't actually ping the Sylvanas after the flame strike. So. And also, Flame Shark doesn't kill the Treader since it's the death rattle. So. And there we go. He does a nice play. There we see the Pyroblast being drawn for Ignite here. He does have 10 cards. Uh, at, the, at this point, you have to start developing developing stuff instead of draw. You can't draw anymore with 10 cards. So there's, the things you can develop are damage, which probably you don't want because of Alex. So the only other things you can develop are like secrets or I don't know, start trying to get, get some removal going. Yeah, he goes for Frost Nova Doomsayer. Maybe ping Sylvanas to set up the Flame Strike if the Doomsayer does not hit. Yeah, for uh, the Keeper, so just in case. And unfortunately, there's no Keeper of the Grove here for Lothar. No, I don't see Lothar doing anything here, but you, you have to think about it because Ancient Lore, you technically can draw two cards. Mm. But I don't think so. I think it's better just save it and just go face here, power pass. It, it doesn't feel good, but... I think so too. Also, because we have seen two Fireballs being out now and the Frostbolt, if Alexstrasza comes down in the turn, you can pair up that big game hunter with some heal by that Ancient of Lore if you want to and go into those stages of fatigue or maybe then use your combo. So I would really like to to keep the Ancient of Lore here, not just waste it for, for uh, card draw. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it looks like he is maybe just gonna... If he's playing, he's definitely drawing. You oh, can't Strife Grow, he disagrees with us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, because he feels like he really needs to get combo, right? Yeah. So... He gets the, sever uh, the Force of Nature, just uh, the Savage Roar is... Like, there's left. kind of two ways to play this game. There's a way to play a game where you're more trying to win the fatigue. Yeah. And then there's another way you're playing where you're trying to go really aggressive. He's choosing the ag aggressive option here. Uh, I don't know if that's right or wrong, but I think I think definitely Emperor Thorson makes it relatively better to go for the aggressive option. Because even with all the Frostbolts and Fireballs being used, there's always that potential of Emperor into Archmage and so many spells that you cannot win the fatigue. Exactly. Fireball. But as you already pointed out, that Emperor Thorson now is a very nice draw once again for Ignite here. Yeah, and that's good. he still has a lot of cards in his hand. So. There's Alex Straza here. Oh, he doesn't even go for Alex Straza. Oh, there is no Alex Straza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind. Because I saw the coin, Alex. I was like, I just assumed they had it. I don't know why. Really cynical. Yeah, he goes for the Emperor Thurston, and now Lothar's turn once more. You have to kill that against Mage. Sure, you can leave that on the board, but how is he going to kill, can it? kill it? <laughs> it's weird, right? Force of nature. Oh, that's yeah, that's so costly. Might, yeah, that's costly. Can you really ignore Emperor Thorson though? Mage with Emperor Thorson. Two then turns? we are back in the beta where Pyroblast was eight mana. Yeah, and it's not. It's it's more about the cheaper spells because. Um, First of all, you can draw. Maybe you draw into oh, a swipe yeah, yeah, if you yeah. feel lucky. Oh, um, yeah. oh it's an Azure Drag. You could draw once more into. Have we seen both rafts being played? <laughs> <laughs> but I guess that's a number guy play here to feel so lucky. And yeah, Lothar yeah. in the end goes for the costly trade, as we already pointed out, with the force of nature. Yeah, it's too scary to have like the, the spells being that cheap because of uh, Archmage, right? You'll get way too many fireballs. Yeah, I, I totally agree. You can't leave that on the board here. Unfortunately, now he only has a 2 3, so. He's not really even pressuring. Ignite, though, 
the bad thing for me is he doesn't have anything to do. Even though he had all these sick turns, he doesn't have either his Archmage or his Alexstrasza. And I feel like his next step of this game is to get one of them, you know, so he can start with his game plan. Yeah, him. and also still for Ignite, 11 cards in the deck, so... Uh, there's still a chance of not drawing one of them in the next in the next few turns. Yeah, that, that's kind of unfortunate. Eventually, if that happens too long, you might just have to go Power Blast. But then I don't know. It seems it's always better to Power mm. after the Alex draws us. So. Yeah, Pyro Blast now with both Fireballs and the Frostbolt being gone. Yeah. I don't think that's that's ever he gonna can, be enough. Yeah, he can't. He can't win like that. You yeah. Better. So he's really down. Alex Draza is his win option here. It depends. I mean, maybe if he can power blast and then Archmage and just get Yeah, still fireball. a crazy Archmage, right? Yeah. With like 16 fireballs. <laughs> <laughs> we, we saw the one game earlier in this turn, I think, where a, a, a mage beat a warrior, a freeze mage beat warrior. Yeah, it with, was with Ignite. Um, it was Ignite. Oh, it was with a, I, I didn't see who it was, but he. I saw a hand. I looked at the stream, it was like seven fireballs. In the yeah. <laughs> I was like, that probably came from uh, Dorazon, I guess, but who knows. So for Lothar now, uh, he needs to find a way to develop his board. I feel like he's gonna save Lothar for after Alex Strazen now. Oh, maybe Ooh. not. He's going for the really aggressive play. He goes for it now. Yeah, and maybe also Azur Drake to draw another card. <laughs> yeah, I can't feel like maybe it's a slight misplay because he should have played Drake first. Oh, okay, that's smart. I didn't go face because. Um, there's, since there's two secrets, yeah, there's the two secrets. Scientist. As you deny the the, the uh, uh, value out of that mad scientist. Maybe it wouldn't have mattered though, because one secret's in the hand. I'm not sure. It wouldn't have mattered because ice bears are in in the hand. But yeah, you can't. Yeah, know sure. That. You you he, don't know that. Yeah, so you that's can't the know thing. that as a player, unfortunately. Only a caster. So. Yeah. So we should start playing here. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Ignite now, uh, on this turn, uh, how many cards does he have in his hand? Two, four, six, eight. So you could still go for Arcane Intellect uh, if you wanted to, but you also are facing a, a very, very big board here. Nine damage for Lothar on the board. Yeah, so, so. Lothar's just using his Lothab here to, um, to pressure because this kind of guarantees that there's not freeze. Is there two frostos being played already, or, or one? There's one in the hand here okay. for Ignite. I guess Ignite might want a Frost Nova. I know that if you play both Frost Novas, and then you play Load Theb, there's no way, because Blizzard is six generally, right? So... Yeah, I but guess because of Emperor Thoros oh. <laughs> now, you can play the Blizzard. Yeah, yeah. That's usually or... wasn't an issue before. Right? Yeah. Okay, that's a good card. Even though he doesn't have Force anymore. That's still really good. Yeah, the Savage Roar. Uh, I'm thinking about Doctor Boom now. Yeah, it's it's gonna be Doctor Boom for sure. I don't I don't see any other play he could do. I don't think it makes any sense any other play. Yeah, I would go Doctor Boom Hero Ability to Shade really because you're you're trying to fish out the the uh, the fire fire blast uh, fire blast. What am I talking? Power the flame strike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the flame strike. Uh, yeah, you're Dr. fishing Boom for that. Power. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you play the um, the Sludge Belt from Harrison, you're way too weak to Flame Strike. It clears everything. Doctor Boom actually survives, and actually the Boom Bots do a lot of damage. I, yeah. I don't see why you would play anything else. I mean, a play you can do is silence your own dude for a Keeper, but I don't see why that matters. You know. And there's still another Doomsayer, maybe so. Exactly, there's another Doomsayer, and Ignite has the option to draw two more cards with his Arcane Intellect, so uh, we might have an interesting turn coming up for Ignite, though. And Lothar goes for the Sludge Belcher, Harrison Jones. Mm. Oh yeah, no, he goes for Shapeshift yeah. into Shade, maybe. I, I like that more than Harrison, but I still don't know if it's better than Dr. Broom, because um, you... Wait, did he miss the attack? Uh, it oh, looks like it. I, it but is there a reason why you don't want to proc the, the barrier. ice barrier? Because it enables your opponent to play the second ice barrier. Yeah, that's it. It makes sense. I think you should hear power return the build up armor. He's preparing a turn where he can deal 23 damage to proc both secrets in one turn. I guess that's what he's planning on right now. Maybe, but it's also just. Um, just don't give your opponent the opportunity to develop the other ice barrier this yeah. turn. I don't, you know, I mean, obviously he's playing super into Flame Strike. I don't know why he would want to do that, right? But I mean, with the Dr. Boom, it's it's not really playing Flame Strike. I don't know. He could just want to save Dr. Boom for later, but 
Oh, who knows? That's the thing, like, oftentimes against Freeze Mage, especially as the other player, like, not the Freeze Mage, like, a lot of times what you do doesn't really matter that much. It's almost like all your mains are the same and you're just, they're just all dying. Hopefully yeah. you have enough pressure, you know? It's kind of <laughs> weird, but it's kind of like that. We do have Devil Savage Raw now here for Lothar. Yeah, he needs to get, I guess, a couple minions. Probably Dr. Boom now. Yeah. Sure, Dr. Boom. We have seen the flame strike, one blizzard also, so maybe you hope that at least one of your boom bots survive and gets the buff of the seven drawers. Mm -hmm. So I can definitely see that play this turn here. If he didn't attack last turn, he might be thinking whether he wants to use his hero power or not, because uh, he didn't attack last turn, so maybe he's already decided Dr. Boom, but he's not sure whether he wants a hero power face or... I expect him not to proc the secret to. this turn as well. I would just stick to the plan. Just don't allow your opponent to play the second ice barrier. <laughs> but we are always talking about the plays we think are good, and then he comes up with something else. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Is there a reason why he's trying to save Dr. Boom so long? I mean, because you think that Keeper might have a lot of, um, a lot of utility against Doomsayer. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe two Doomsayers have been played already, I don't, I don't know. I can just remember one as well. Yeah. I don't know, it's next level. <laughs> I, I can't think of a reason why. <laughs> yeah. Lothar ahead of the meta. Ignite, on the other hand, he did draw a Bloodmade Thalnos this turn. I kind of feel bad for Ignite because he's sad. Like yeah. so many turns to draw Alex. We were talking about it when he had eleven Archmage. cards in his deck to draw into Alex or Archmage and Thanidas, and now we are six cards yeah. into the I mean, deck. He and... is very low on burn, like we said. Right? He has only what one power blast and two ice lances. Does he have a frostbolt? I think so. One frostbolt. Yeah, one frostbolt is in his hand. He also has an ice lance. Uh, he went for the blizzard this turn in combination with the ping and the blood mage Thalos here. Lothar drawing a wild grove. Just decided to use the here over over the hero power. I'm not sure. I can see it being better to try hero power return. Um, he draws a Thorison though. Okay, so that allows him to hero power anyways. Because you really want a hero power return here. One issue that Lothar did run into is that he uses ancient lore to draw instead of heal, and then, you know, it just died, so it, was, it wasn't that efficient. Um, I wonder if that's gonna, like, hurt him in the long run, because his aggressive play didn't really enable Yeah, any, any, yeah, we any, were talking about, he, he was going for the aggressive line, but now still is playing it out, like, defensively, in the end, mm -hmm. because he's kind of forced to. So in the end, it might have been better to just keep the engine of Lore to really be in that defensive spot and to save that yeah. 5 heal up after Alexstrasza comes, because we are sure it will come eventually. Oh! Wow. That's finally one of them here, Archmage. I almost feel like the Alex. Oh! Wow! <laughs> both in one turn. Yeah. So this is now you know you can, we can just see ignite. You know after that he just like he was just like moving up on the table like you know trying to yeah. body posture. You know thinking it's like a tough turn. Now you have to think about everything. Exactly. Now he is in a good spot. I would say. If you Alexstrasza this turn, you leave your opponent on 19 HP. If he goes up for another hero ability, that's 20 HP. So next turn you play your Archmage Antonidas, maybe hope. Well, you get to think about, you don't want one Lothar to proc both of your secrets to be in that comfortable stop, a spot where you can yeah. play. It's really sick because if you do Alex here, then you feel like you're going to die. Not die, but yeah. you feel like you're going to lose your... You lose your like you want to Alex here first before burning, right? But then you also don't want to die, like lose your blocks. And if you go Archmage, you can you can frost out of it so you won't die. And I don't know, it actually seems good because because if you freeze the board in Archmage, how is Archmage he going to kill the coin as well to get a second yeah, fireball? Exactly. It's like it's it feels hard, and you can also cycle the. Oh no, he can't. Yeah, you can also cycle. Something else too. Yeah, he goes for Frostbolt oh, and Iceland's tech like is out. Lot, Emperor Thorson has now three fireballs landing up in his hand. I like this a lot because 
And as we see, there's not even an easy way here for Lothar to, to take care of that of that art page and the knights. Well, he draws into Wrath. Oh. Mm. He maybe has to use a combination of Savage Draw here. At least play one of them. Yeah, I don't know. I almost feel like he would have been better off Ice Lancing the 2 1 instead. Even though you leave up Thor's on, I don't know if it matters that much, like the mana cost. And I really did like his decision not to use a Frost Zone with it. That's like a really important card, you know, if you can save. But then it feels like if you leave up both, it's pretty easy to to just lose your Archmage and you know, to Savage or, or a Wrath or whatever. Um, now Lothar can actually kill can actually kill that. Actually, unfortunately, I don't know if it matters. There's too many fireballs already with the Alex Rosa. Yeah. And because he's already used Ancient Lore. Exactly, yeah, and both Ancients matters. are gone because we have seen one in the early game and then the one we were talking about. So both Ancients are gone, so no heal here for Lothar anymore. If he does not play a heal bot, which I didn't yeah, expect. Yeah, there's too much damage. Alex Rosa, you're at me around 20. Three Fireballs and a Power Blast is enough to kill. Totally. So Lothar has to kind of just all in. I think he was even thinking, or he is even still thinking about whether just ignore Archmage and just completely go all in here and try to block the block. I because think... Because there's already enough Fireballs to kill him, maybe. Well, but in the end, he goes for the trade. But now, this is the turn here. This is the turn yeah, for the is, Golden Alex Yeah, this is easy Alex Straza here. Um, and then you just try to burn him, him out. It's actually kind of likely that you don't even lose your bulk here as Ignite, right? Because because only one Savage were left, so... For Uther, now finally he goes for the Dr. Boom, who will now play his big Game Hunter to take care of that Alex Raza and heal up with his hero ability about one more armor. Is on 21 HP now, but even if he procs the secret the secrets, no, he can't even proc both of them, so it's... It's not looking good here for Lothar. So much damage in Ignite's hand. He goes for maybe double fireball hero ability here. Yeah, he... Because you have so many fireballs, usually you want to power blast first because it's like a more expensive card, you, you know, but if you have that many fireballs, you might just forget about the power blast. Yeah. <laughs> just so only fireball, I don't know. And like that, he brings down Lothar to 9 HP to 8 HP with the Fire Blast, with the hero power. And as we already pointed out, there's no heal here. And even though the Savage Roar comes down eventually, Ignites already says, well played. So we see a lot of damage coming in. <laughs> that Dr. Boom is... It was pretty late. <laughs> yeah, very late, Dr. Boom. Mm, he had a lot of turns early to play. By it. going for that aggressive way, I would have really liked to see Dr. Boom being played earlier. Just that 7-7 seven, seven body on the board not being taken out by the flame yeah. strike. We can ask Lothar after the game what he was thinking. I, people usually have reasons, and a lot of times it's hard to yeah. see. But. but there we go! Ignite enjoys his Pyroblast for 10 damage to Lothar's face, and he wins over Lothar's Druid here with his Freeze Mage. And Ignite is now down to his Paladin, playing against Druid and Hunter. We have seen the Cockhammer in, in the version of, of uh, Ignite's Paladin, so the Cockhammer is doing a great job against both, against the Hunter and the Druid. So uh, he definitely does not have the worst Paladin deck here prepared. Yeah. I mean, in this, like, during, in these situations, it's the only one where, like, you can not roll dice and still it doesn't matter, right? Because... Like usually, I just I would roll a dice and everything, but if it's like they only have one class stuff, sometimes it doesn't matter. You can actually just choose whatever one. You don't have to roll here. Actually, I'm curious. Are you just using that as a as a saying, rolling a dice, or are you actually no, no, rolling I, dice? Online, I usually use a random number generator. Okay. Here, though, I brought some <laughs> dice. I use a d6 and a d4 here because if you have three classes, yeah. you can have one to three for d6, right? The one and two, three and four, and five and six, and then if you um. If you're going down to two, you can roll a d4 for one and two is one, and three and four is another one. Or you can just flip the coin. <laughs> I really like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, uh, yeah. here you, you would just pick what like whatever one's better. Exactly. You, you, wanna, you probably want to look better, so it's better to lose three, two than three, one. And we are jumping into the final game of that series. Uh, into the final game, what am I saying? No, into uh, the fourth game of that series. It is Ignite on the Paladin against Lothar on the Hunter. 
And yeah, we do see the Wogan Infiltrator. We have a Knife Juggler and Unleash the Hounds. That's a very nice card against Paladin. Also, the Eagle Horn Bow. So, I really like the, the starting hand here. On the other hand, Ignite does have Master for Battle. Equality not really doing too much against the Face Hunter. Also, Dr. Boom coming way too late. Yeah, that's pretty good. I don't know. Did he keep everything? He did keep everything. Yeah, I agree to that. I really like that. It's such a nice curve. You do have a one drop, you do have a two drop, you have Unleash, Eagle Horn Bow, so you can react to whatever comes on the board. Ignite, on the other hand, he has the Harrison Jones, he has a Quartermaster and the Pile of the Dreader in his hand. Yeah, it, it, it's almost like, I think you usually prefer um, if you have like a Haunted Creeper or something instead of a Knife Juggler, but... Yeah, and like this, with playing the coin, Knife Juggler, well, you don't want to play the Wong Infiltrator because it gets taken out so easily by a Silver Hand Recruit, but with the Knife Juggler, your curve is not so good anymore. Yeah, I, I don't know, this almost feels a little bit weird because if uh, your opponent drops Shield Minibot here and you don't get lucky, you can get kind of really messed up. But... Yeah. And Ignite is already contesting that uh, Knife Juggler here with his Iron Big oh, Owl. wow, that's a really good draw, I think. Even though you won't um, proc the snakes with the Knife Juggler, yeah. it still kind of prevents the attack, right? Because if he attacks, you get three one ones, which is still very good. Exactly. I, I really like just dropping a snake. It's kind of obvious in a way, right? But... Yeah, and uh, Ignite checks for it. He now knows it's no explosive trap. He goes for the Master for battle. He al also has the Consecration. He did draw that this turn, so that's lining up perfectly if he then procs the, the Snake Trap. But on turn 3 as well, Lothar can now go for a big unleash. Oh, this is sick, because Lothar really has to decide here. If you go all face here, and then you get Consecrated, I think you just get crushed. Right, yeah, it's so much that you lose. Yeah, because he doesn't have uh, explosive, right? So all these one ones still stick around. I yeah. wonder if he's actually going to make a compromise, like trade like, two hounds like, yeah, and go like with that. two to the face. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I also would like to see that because really, if that consecration comes down, and it's That's likely. so much damage. Like a lot of times, because Paladin's a class where you need a race face hunter, right? It's usually hard, but. You're not like outlasting them. Like you don't have yeah. heal as Paladin generally. Like not too much. Eventually, you're gonna die to hero power, right? I think. Wow. Well, yeah. So. But he goes. Well, okay, so does he does a compromise. He trades the owl away. Yeah. <laughs> Easy turn for ignite. It's still the. Yeah. Wow. So Ignite does not even care about the snake trap. Yeah, he, he just, uh, just plays around it. Just goes for the concentration. No, if that's right. I would have. It, I mean, just you do lose one extra guy, right? Uh, yeah, you could have also used your weapon, just That's take true. one I extra can't damage. I see that being good. Because say a wolf rider comes down here, like... Yeah, you want to trade you that way. Yeah, you're oh. gonna want to trade against a wolf rider. Yeah. But, but now you kind of can't. I also see that. But with the Quartermaster following that up, you have so much pressure. So, as you said, you want to go into that race against yeah. the Face Hunter here. And that's just what he does. Oh, well. And he draws into yeah. the second Consecration, no, but so... I feel like he could just use the one... The weapon to kill, to kill one one one. Yeah, but that's not that much damage. Yeah, still, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I agree to that. Uh, but with the second consecration, Ignite is feeling very comfortable here. And yeah. Yeah, these Lothar. are these are the games where you kind of get crushed as, as hunter. Um, especially with the kind of like the risky play Lothar did. He did kind of make a compromise, but he didn't. He kind of didn't trade for enough still, and. Uh, and the quartermaster just absolutely works you. He's gonna lose the race now. There's, and even though you were pointing out that's actually a bad matchup here for the for the paladin, uh, it still looks very good. And that's the second time back to back wins over face hunter <laughs> because I already predict that here. But it is looking so good for ignite here. <laughs> yeah. I really don't see a way for Lothar to come back. Yeah, a lot, a lot of times. Uh, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I said a, a lot of times like face hunter people it always has a bad reputation of being like super super easy to play. You always go face. Yeah. But there's all these small things, even like the trade there, but even like turn one where he did like coin knife juggler exactly. instead of like that. I'm not sure. Like, all these things are very speculative to me. I don't I don't know if it's a misplay, I don't know if it's right. It's just but it's actually harder than it seems. Like, there's a lot of very hard decisions still, so I think so too. If you're playing face hunter on this level, it's it's really 
It comes down to all those little things. Now we see a lot being played again, but we know that Consecration is there. And I just expect the 1 1 Silverhand recruit to trade into uh, maybe the Iron Big Owl. It doesn't really matter. Uh, uh, at this point, because there's also explosive, there's no point in going face with the 1 1. You yeah, just proc the snake. Exactly, too. but it doesn't matter what he attacks exactly, with that 1 1. Exactly. That's Consecrate. what I meant. And finally, the Snake Trap gets proc'd. <laughs> I would definitely, yeah. Lothar can't expect two consecrations. And I see a little so. smile on Ignite's face here. That's a huge consecration, and you definitely enjoy that. <laughs> He's a little relieved that it all goes out like that. And now you do not even have to play the zombie chow anymore, because you're putting yeah. on so much pressure. That's true. You can just go for your silver hand recruit. And yeah, Lothar has the eagle horn bow. Plays it, has the Wolf Rider, but <laughs> whatever he does, he's facing lethal damage next yeah. turn. So this series will go to Ignite. Yeah, congrats Ignite for winning the series. Uh, this is uh, the winner's bracket part of this group, so Ignite makes it to the round of eight from this, I believe. Once again, and in the first group stage, he did go out 6-1, and he goes out 6-1 again. Oh, wow. And that's very strong, so Ignite really having a hot streak here, and very well played, I would also say. Yeah, a lot of people are really imp uh, impressed with his his freeze mage. I think yeah. I've heard uh, a lot of people saying that he's maybe even the best freeze mage right now. He's been playing really good with that deck, and uh, and even like something like even beating a control warrior freeze mage. That's really impressive. It's that's very, hard to do, very so. impressive. He's really doing a great job here on on that seed story yeah. card. And I guess it I guess it shows because like. Um, it shows how big Emperor is for Freeze Mage because you yeah. you've only had one week of practice realistically with these you know with these cars Emperor so um, for him to be so comfortable with the Emperor already in Freeze Mage is pretty cool so totally and that leaves us with the conclusion uh, once more ignite one over Lothar here three one in that match and we will be back after a short break with the decider match of that group B and it will be Lothar against Nimsh. Uh, so take a short break as well and we will be right back. <laughs> 